Hey guys, I'm here just outside of San Francisco where Chevy flew me out to test drive that. That's right, it's the new Chevy Bolt, Chevy's new EV. And that's an important car for Chevy because it gets, get this, 238 miles on a charge. And there's no direct competitor right now. The car that's closest to it would be the Leaf, but that gets only about 110 miles on a full charge. So the question is, is this five passenger active lifestyle EV, the electric car that will bring electric cars into the mainstream. And that is coming up right now on the Fast Lane Car. So how does the Bolt drive? Well, this may be a cliche, but it's a cliche that is so, so true. It drives just like an electric car. And what I mean by that is it has a lot of torque, it's very quiet and it does a lot of regeneration when you let off the throttle. Now you can actually increase that amount of regeneration simply by putting it in one pedal driving. That's what GM calls it. And basically by flicking this backwards, I can drive this car without ever touching the brakes. If I need a little bit more braking, all I have to do is hit this paddle on the left side and it gives me even more regen. So it's a whole different way of driving, but it's kind of fun. It's like playing a video game that's real to see if you can keep going without actually touching your brakes. Of course, being safe. Obviously, if there's an emergency need, then you hit your brakes. Yeah, so we wanted to roll it out in California and Oregon first because 50% of our EV market is there. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to make sure that those customers uh, foremost uh, had the car right away. And we'll, we'll roll this out throughout the uh, country uh, through, by the end of this summer, we'll have uh, all the states covered. The cool thing about this vehicle is that it's a real life five passenger 238 mile range car now our electric car expert anton says that you'll know when an electric car becomes mainstream when it's just a car not an electric car and i think gm's approaching that with this car because it starts to feel natural driving it it feels like i'm just taking the family truckster for milk or to pick up my kids at school. And this thing will do that. Look at the amount of headroom I have. There's seating for five people. There's ample room in the back to put all your stuff in. The only thing you really can't do with it, and GM may dispute this, is go on a cross-country trip because, of course, you have to charge it up every 238 miles. Now, here's an interesting fact. I asked the engineer how long it would take to deplete these batteries if you were full open throttle. Let's say you were on the Autobahn and you're wide open throttle. How much range do you think you can get out of this vehicle? And GM says that they've actually figured that number out. So full range, officially it's 238. That's on the EPA cycle. It's actually, depending on your driving style, a bit longer. But if you're on the Autobahn, full open throttle, at a top speed of 92 miles an hour, which this has, then it'll go 170 miles on a full charge. And that's pretty uh, impressive, 170 miles at 92 miles an hour. So for all you Ampera Europeans out there, you can wide open throttle this on the Autobahn. Right, so here's a, we have a, an eight inch display here for the cluster and what we show on the left side here is our, range, our state of charge or our range uh, for um, our battery. And so what you see in the middle there is what we expect to get um, out of uh, the battery. And the way this works is that you see these gray uh, bars here. As you're driving, we'll start to show whether you're trending towards max or trending towards min based on how efficiently you drive. I love this fat steering wheel. I love the fact that in this premium package, it's heated. I've got the heated seats front and back. I also have that. GM says zero to 60 in 6.5 seconds. And I believe them. It's fast. It's really fast. So by far my favorite feature of this new Bolt, and this is the first time GM has used it in a Chevy vehicle, is this video camera that's embedded 
basically in the tailgate and projects onto the rearview mirror. So right now, as you can see, you've got a traditional rearview mirror and there's a suitcase there that is blocking half of my view out the back. But check this out. All I have to do is flick this backward and there is a video camera that is actually being displayed in the rearview mirror. So now I can see what's behind me so that the kiddos or luggage or anything else that's in the back of the car don't obstruct my view. Here it is with the video camera and here it is as a traditional rearview mirror. How cool is that? There is a downside of this though and that is you have to change your focus when you're looking from the road to the camera that's embedded in the rearview mirror and that can be kind of disconcerting but it's super sharp and it's super cool. And they've got first mover advantage. What I mean by that is that of course the Leaf which directly competes against this or will, the new second generation Leaf isn't out yet. The Tesla Model 3, well that isn't out yet either. So you can play, let's see how much region I can get back in the battery, but is it a fun car to drive? Well, it feels very solid. It's got a 55-45 weight distribution, which isn't ideal, obviously you'd want 50-50, but it feels solid. It feels like it's put together out of one piece of metal as opposed to a whole bunch of different grades of steel. And when you want to punch it, oh my gosh, this, did you hear that? in this wet rain it will screech its tires all day long uh, 60 kilowatt hours yep 60 uh, kilowatt hour battery um, that uh, is heated and cooled yep thermally managed and how big of a motor do you have how many so we have a 150 kilowatt motor mm -hmm. it's uh, about 200 horsepower if you wanted to do the conversion and if i remember right you said 266 pound foot of torque yep 266 foot pounds um 360 uh, newton meters 260 I'm sorry 360 newton meters 268 individual cells in the battery 288 cells 288. and there's 10 modules that make up uh, all of those cells and those live underneath our and they live underneath the uh, structure of the car and actually it's kind of interesting because the the structure of that battery pack as it's as we integrated into the car we were able to increase the torsional stiffness by over 28 percent some of the electric compliance vehicles and i'm thinking about you soul ev were designed to give you more range and less torque so in other words the manufacturer made a deliberate decision to give you a lot more range and so when you floored it like this there wasn't a lot of torque gm no way they're playing serious by the way i do have a sport button right here all that does is it changes the mapping for the throttle so that i get a little bit more torque with a little bit less pedal that's all it doesn't really change the weight of the steering wheel and certainly there's no transmission to shift so it doesn't change that in case you're wondering how much it costs to actually fill up the batteries i asked gm that as well and they said here in california if you're charging at peak current times which is usually during the daytime when it's most expensive then it's about twelve dollars to get a full 238 miles of range if it's at night then it's only four dollars so for four dollars i can drive to work and back i could probably drive to visit my mom and I could probably go to work and back, depending on your commute, work and back and work and back, without having actually spent more than $4 on the cost of commuting. And that is, of course, reflected in the cost of the car, because it's not cheap. It starts at $37 and about $500. If you get the Premier, like this one, then it goes up another 5,000. And for that, you get leather, you get a bunch of safety equipment like blind spot monitoring. You, of course, get this heated steering wheel. So you're at a pretty hefty number. Of course, the government will subsidize that with a tax rebate of 7,500. But with the Trump administration, God knows how that's going to last. My guess would be not very long. So really, this car is going to have to stand on its own. Is it going to be a car that's a good car that people want to buy and want to drive? on? everyday basis is this going to be a second car that people have to work but when you go on that long road trip you have a primary car i'm guessing that's probably the case for most people
but in general, driving it is a hoot. It's solid, it's fast, it's entertaining. I wouldn't call it fun. And uh, if at some point they actually make an all wheel drive version of this, it would be a car that I would actually like to have and own in Colorado. Uh, but right now, as a front wheel drive car, it's not something that's practical for people, at least in my home state. Check out those waves, man. Huh.